Hey there everyone! Today we're going to see how to create a telemetry overlay for any camera, not just GoPros or DJI drones. For that, in addition to the camera, you will need a phone, a smartwatch or any device that can record GPS positions to GPX format. Step 1. Start recording. Step 2. Start your GPS logger. I will be using this Android app, but check the description for links, including to iOS apps. Make sure the app is set up to record in the GPX format and use a small time interval. Usually, around one second looks good. I recommend placing the phone in front of the camera and start logging. This will help with synchronization. Do whatever activity you had in mind and then in your computer will start the editing process. You will need After Effects with the telemetry template, the 2MGJSON online tool and the two files we just created a video and a GPX file. Now grab the GPX file and convert it to MGJSON. This should be pretty quick. And now we can drag both the video and the MGJSON file into After Effects. Double click on the video footage and let's browse through the first frames until we see the moment in which the GPX log should start. Let's set an endpoint and create a new composition based on the video footage. Now we can start adding gauges to our footage. Let's start with the speedometer. Double click on it to enter the gauge composition and we will now use the mgjson file to link our data. Drag it into the composition and use the control layer to change the effects. You can find this tab in the Windows menu. So when we select our mgjson file as a source, the gauge should display the metrics of our video. I will now change the style of the gauge because I want to place it in the corner and, and it should look like a quarter of a circle. So let's make it take 90 degrees and turn it 45 degrees to the right. It can be a bit wider. That's fine. And it's got too many numbers, so let's remove some of these labels. And this is happening within a city, so we can lower the maximum speed. You can change your units to nautical or imperial miles if you live in an imperial country. And maybe reduce the number of ticks too to make it look cleaner. But we'd want thicker ticks. And let's also color the text to make it stand out a bit more. And now back in our composition, we can press S to rescale the layer and drag it to the corner. That looks fine. Now back in the project tab, I'll select the GPS path gauge, which is usually pretty interesting. And let's do the same process. Drag and drop the mgjson file, select it as a source in the control layer. And now let's give it some custom looks. We can change the position color to red to match the speedometer palette and I might not want to see the exact coordinates. Let's show the full path, not just the completed section, and increase the size of the position and the path to improve visibility. And again, let's press S to rescale and drag it to a corner. You'll see that it's always the same process, but each gauge has its particular settings. And let's add the acceleration gauge. Now. This can be somewhat related to throttle and brake, but not exactly, because it's exclusively based on the GPS data. So it basically shows when the speed was going up and when it was going down. We'll make the ticks thicker, more visible. And you'll see the smoothing setting. This allows us to make the gauge move slowly. For example, if we disable it, you will see that the acceleration tends to move very quickly. So if we add lots of smoothing, movements will be more progressive. But I'll choose a middle value. And again, because we are in a city, let's choose moderate minimum and maximum values. Rescale and reposition as usual. And let's add a time gauge. This can read the video time and date from our data. And let's disable the milliseconds, which are not that useful in this case. But we can also use it as a stopwatch that starts from zero. Note that you can trim the MGJSON layer to set start and stop points for the stopwatch. 
but in this case we're more interested in the current time. You can also use the American date system if that makes sense to you. And reposition, rescale, and let's go to the next one, which will be the distance, where you can see both the current and the full distance. So let's link the data and restyle it. Put it in its place and finally, let's also add the course direction, which some people might call bearing or heading. And let's link the data and match the color palette of the other gauges. Rescale reposition. And let's also make the text yellow for visibility. And as you can see, this plays very slowly. So I'll render it for you and let's see the final result. You could of course have combined these in many different ways or styled them differently. And here are some of the gauges we haven't used. We've got altitude, altitude over time, which looks great for things like cycling, the slope of our path. This is the speed tracker, which shows speed currently and over time and the vertical speed useful for things like aviation. There are many more things you can do with the template and the data, so make sure to check the full instructions. And as you might know, I've got specific tools for GoPro cameras, DJI drones, and maybe more devices, tools and tutorials coming up. So stay tuned and if you've got questions, I'm always around and happy to help. See you next time.